everyone, how are you all doing? So today I'm coming at you with a book review. It's something I've been meaning to do for a long time on this channel and I discussed it with everyone on Instagram, all you punks that follow me there and you guys sounded like you're well into it. So here we go. The books I'm gonna be reviewing today, I will show you them all, there's a lot. Hope you, hope you got a nice cup of tea because there's uh, a lot of them here. The ones that I've been on my reading list for a long time and during this lockdown, I just thought, fuck it, let's go for it, let's read them. They're all slightly different, completely different, well, some of them are really different from each other. I just wanted to discuss them with you guys. I hope this is like informative, exciting, and if you were on the fence about buying one of these, I hope this review kind of helps you think if you like, like it or not. So, I'll go in order of how I read them and when I finished them. The four titles, I should probably say that, is Lucy Worsley's Jane Austen at Home, killer book amazing just we'll talk about it but it's so good uh gentleman jack by Anne chomna um yeah it's about Anne lister good book good book um vivian goldman's revenge of the she punks that is like the one that's a bit different from the rest of them that's about women in punk through the years basically through the decades and the final one is this absolute beast by Anne radcliffe the mysteries of udofo i don't know if i'm saying udofo right but since Anne radcliffe wrote this about 300 years ago can't really ask her but I say you dofo, so I apologise if I say that wrong, but that's how I'll be saying it. But yeah, that beast as well. So we're going to start with uh, Gem and Jack. So I do a little bit of context for each book, but I don't want to ruin it for anybody. I don't want to ruin the plot. Um, but yeah, I'll give a little bit of backstory to it. So this one is about Anister, who was a prominent figure in Halifax in the Victorian times. She was a landowner and she owned um, a house called Shipton Hall. She wrote diaries, very prolific diary writer, journals. They were found, I think, in the 70s. And they basically described about how um, her relations, basically, because she was a lesbian, but she couldn't really tell anyone. But then she also wasn't shy about it. She didn't really, like, say anything, but she wasn't going to hide herself. And, yeah, she's now become an icon because she's a legend. She's an absolute legend. I got into Anne Lister because of the programme made by Sally Wainwright. Anyone who knows Sally Wainwright knows that she's a legend. She's created programmes like Happy Valley, uh, Talk Invisible, and obviously Gentleman Jack. I love um, Talk Invisible. It's a story about the Brontes. It's it's incredible. Like It's just basically a biography, but it brings it to life. It came out a couple of years ago at Christmas time, and I, I always wanted to go to the Bronte Prize Museum, and we went the day after Talk Invisible came out, and it was oh god carnage it was like an iron maiden gig it was just so many people there it was oh my god crazy but i def definitely recommend going and checking out talking visible but i watched the program jem and jack and literally just fell in love with and this i thought she's absolutely amazing because she's just so unapologetic and i love that about her she's now become um a yeah an icon in the, the gay community and stuff because she just didn't care she just lived her life and yeah that's all we can do really isn't it basically it's the same thing it's because the program was so good because it was it was not like you know documentary kind of thing but it, it didn't make up stories whatever happened in Anis's, Anis's life is in the program but I wanted to read more about it and this is a really good book because it gives like excerpts of her diary and her journals like interspersed with the story so like I'll show you like that's how she used to write she used to write in code so people wouldn't obviously read her journals and talk about you know her sexuality and things like that um and i yeah i loved it it's yeah like i say it's a good accompaniment to the program you've got like pictures of there you've got Sur saran jones dressed up as Anne lister um yeah just just like her personal belongings so i like a bit of pictures in there i like i like a few pictures in a book just so it's like break it up a little bit it's a really easy read it's not like chapters are small it's not what yeah 300 or so pages i would definitely recommend it i just wanted to know more about anister and her life i mean i've got the book um of the her diaries but that is dense obviously because she wrote every day and it looks hard to get into but this was like a perfect balance between describing her life in an easy fun way and excerpts of a diary so i can kind of like get into that book now without it being so like oh jesus christ this is a heavy read you know so yeah i definitely recommend it the four words by sally wayne right she just talks about her life and her, yeah her impact on Halifax and her legacy now and yeah I would I would definitely recommend recommend that book it was an easy book to take on like the train when I was going to work you read a chapter and uh, you can't you don't really lose it and the story I won't ruin the story of 
Gemma Jack. It's I find it a bit sad to be honest because basically her her quest was to find love. Like you enter the book when she's about forty and she's just sick of being messed around really by women in her life. And yeah, I would definitely recommend it if you haven't read it. So that's Gemma Jack by Anne Chima. Um, an easy read and yeah, informative, informative. Um, and it's a it's a natural progression to the series and uh, to the program i got mine at jane austen festival which is really weird it's super cheap it's like 8.99 for the book yeah lovely read give it a go so the next one i read was what was it oh jane austen at home what a book what a book everyone who knows me knows skanehead knows it lucy worsley i love her i love her uh she's a massive jane austen fan i went to a talk of hers a couple of years ago on this book tour and I hadn't read the book at the time, and it's always been on my reading list, and i tell you why I haven't read it, and it's probably like a really ridiculous reason, but my copy was signed by Lucy, and I didn't want to wreck it, so I was waiting to see, like, waiting to get a copy, like a paperback I could just chuck in my bag and read, and I'm annoyed at myself that I've waited so long to read it. Oh, great book. It obviously focuses around her different homes in her life. She had, I think it's about six to eight I want to say and that's the chapters really and how Jane felt at those times and yeah it's, it's a biography but through her houses and where she lived through the country because she moved around a lot Jane same thing as the um Gemma Jack book you've got like it's interspersed with pictures and things of her family and her belongings and things I love Lucy like Rosie's style I love it when she her, as like a historian on tv and I love yeah the way she writes and the way she like speaks and stuff it comes across her her voice comes across in this book and i love that this also had a program to go through with it on bbc one-off program i've watched it so many times if you ever see it see it on tv record it because you can't buy it on dvd and it's really hard to like find on the um bbc website but it is incredible it's yeah basically this book it goes with it um and it's just about jane's life going through it from when she's born to she died watching it from a fan jane i like lucy really gives it like this breath of fresh air and really. it's not a dry biography at all which sometimes you can get with Jane I've read a lot of them where you're a bit like god this woman was amazing you've just you've just sucked the soul out of her you know what I mean it's a bit, it's a bit dry you can't put it down either that's the other thing I love about this book sometimes you're a bit like oh, I'll leave it for a few months this one isn't like that at all the things I liked about it was it linked Jane you, you could relate to her more you know you, you could link to her, and it linked her a lot with her family I knew I learned a lot more about Jane and her family through this book than other biographies I've read. I've read about I want to say about thirty Jane Austen biographies. So that's a lot. I love Jane, obviously, obviously it's Jane Austen. We love her. Um, this one I've never read stuff like it before. I found inform new information out, which is always fun. And though Lucy gives her impression across of Jane and her decisions in life, it's not preachy. It's not judgy, which sometimes you get. She just notes like in her way like what kind of decisions Jane made I also love as well she really taps into the connection between Jane and her sister Cassandra sometimes you get that and you have got books dedicated to it but this was nice it, it kind of really reinforced how Jane was a feminist she didn't take shit from anybody yeah she had a really loving relationship with her sister um things that I really, I really liked and that how I didn't know uh, before this book that Jane had such a strained relationship with her mother and that she basically made her own family through her connections of single women like herself really like her sister and her friends and governesses she knew that was good it's a good like pop call if you want to do like a jane pilgrimage if you want to go to house museum in chawton or gosham park it gives you like a little bit of a backstory to them so you can visit and know a little bit about it a little bit of history rather than just reading like a uh you know very dry kind of like visitor book you know like this is this gives it a bit more variation and color I loved it. I love Lucy Words, like I say. Like, I think she's a legend. Oh, yeah, because so I went to a talk of hers. Where was it? Somewhere I've never been before. Loughborough. And I asked her questions about where Jane was buried and why she got buried there, which is Winchester Cathedral, and how she's buried in such a prestigious place. And Lucy's very nice, answered my questions, took a little snap. It was lovely. Yeah, I would definitely recommend this book. If Not even if you're a Jane fan. It's not a heavy biography, and it's not, like, over... Let's, it's not scary to read really so if you've if you ever want to know about Jane and not read the Wikipedia this is definitely the book to pick up I'm just battered because I just reread it reread it 
and I just I just love it like the passion for Jane definitely comes through and as a Jane I I've read some honestly some proper dire biographies maybe I should do a, a video of books I don't like because oh, I've got a few I've got a few I'm very passionate about that I do not like and this is definitely not one of them this is top three Jane Austen biographies and I'm biased because I love Lucy but um yeah I would really recommend it people other people that I know that have read it have said they love it too and I can totally see why it's just oh it's such an easy but it's beautiful really nice lovely book lovely proper good research as well i love that in a biography so yeah definitely pick this up if you've been wondering about jane if you've read prime pages something think i want to know more about her as an author her, her personal life or you just love a good biography great place to start honestly great place the next one i read oh god this guy this guy was an absolute beast to to, to read right 600 700 pages long in old English, words like reverie, that I've never used, learned before, which basically means daydream, casement, which I presume means window, things like that. It was a tough read. I read this book because it is mentioned a lot by Jane Austen in Northanger Abbey. The heroine in the book, Catherine Morland, reads it and she gets inspired and has all these assumptions about Northanger Abbey and thinks it could be haunted. And it's basically due to this book, so I thought Jane read it. I've got to read it. Now, Anne Radcliffe wrote a couple like this. Um, it's meant to be like the, the start of gothic romances, right? I love a romance book, don't get me wrong. This was this was good. It was good, but it was difficult to read. I had to sit down an hour a day and read it and then um, get through chapter by chapter. It's made of four volumes, right? The first volume, it's, it, yeah, the, it could have been edited, right? The first volume I don't think is even needed. It's just setting up the story but it's set up in too much detail i mean i couldn't really write a book like this don't get me wrong like i'm not dissing Anne radcliffe but it is in dire need of editing a bit like it's a bit of weird similarity but you know goblet of fire we, we read through the harry potter books and he gets goblet of fire you think fucking hell this is a big book in it like don't have to be this, this it would have done a good bit of editing you know that's what i feel like with this book um yeah it's very just descri very descriptive I do love that about it like you get to learn parts of France Italy very descriptive with what you know what the landscapes are like what the people are like animals that kind of thing you feel like you're there you feel like you're in Milan you feel like you're in Venice but when you think that Anne Radcliffe never went to those places it's a bit okay so she's just making it up for her imagination you know the other thing as well is the lead character Emily I don't think is that likable so when you don't like connect with a main character you kind of feel like i don't care if she lives or dies and in that book i was a bit like mm. um i think jane read this and she she always had a problem with lead women in books like heroines and stuff you know fainting all the time or like crying all the time and i can so see that in this book i wish i'd counted how many times the lead character emily cries or faints it's just like i get it she's a sensitive soul and it obviously written by a woman you could kind of hope that she'd make women a little bit more forceful and daring and she's not emily she's not it's an okay book um the plot's been out 300 years so i'm sure you'll be okay if i talk a little bit about you know what happens in it there's a lot of what you think is murder she falls in love with the character that you, you know you think oh, i don't really care about that character i don't i don't know why she fell in love with him he's a bit weird like i'm not i'm not really a fan and um yeah all these things happen to her family and you just basically follow Emily's story. I can see why in Northanger Abbey, Catherine Morland is obsessed with this book. She ditched it, what happens, who knows, kind of thing. I can see why, because there's a point where it all goes wrong. She goes to Ordofer Castle, goes even worse for her. She doesn't know what's going on. And at the end, it's all kind of explained. But the last volume is explained so quickly. The last couple of chapters got all these questions. But one of the big questions in it is, what's behind the black veil? She sees this veil in a Udofo, makes her faint. Like she pulls back a veil, sees something, faints. And you, as a reader, you don't know what's behind it. So you're going through 300 pages like, what is behind the black veil? And at the end, last chapter, you just get told and it has no relevance to anything. And you're a bit like, okay, well, I could have made that up. You know what I mean? It's a bit, what was the point of that? So that was a bit annoying. But I'm glad I read it because <clears throat> Jane did, like I say. And um, yeah, it's an, it's an interesting read. I think if this was written now um, and it's story of... Emily in her life and the misfortunes that happened to her I think Emily would be a bit more gusto but back in the day obviously 
uh, Regency time. She isn't very much, and it is gripping. I'll give it that. It's a gripping book. I didn't. It was some parts of it was so scary that I couldn't sleep some nights. And that's saying something. A book that holds up three hundred years like that is pretty good. And it, like I say, it's very descriptive, and that's really interesting to to read because you, you're you're put in that place. And I, it's a long time since I've read a novel where I felt so engrossed in it. But seven hundred pages. 700 pages no need for it to be that long honest to god isn't but yeah i did i did enjoy it i like i would give it a read if you're a jane austen fan you think oh what's it like and it once you get through about half it the rest of it's easy i totally understand Northanger Abbey after this after reading this book like there's a few references between henry tilney and catherine morland and they discuss not just not even just the book but um where like Catherine's been and stuff and there's like a few jokes in that make sense now you know, I read this book and obviously the relationship between Catherine Morland and Isabella Thorpe Isabella tells her to read this book and she's like oh, I would tell you what's behind the black veil for anything I get it it's an interesting book and it is a thrilling read and if you like dense novels go for it if you love gothic romances this is like the starting place I think so definitely give it a read but it, it is a tough it is a tough one most people can't get past the first volume really the first few chapters because it's just a lot and like I say, you don't really connect with the characters, so you're a bit like, yeah, I don't care what happens to them. I mean, I, I read it to the end because I wanted to find out what happened. And the last the last volume, I think, goes really quickly, but yeah, just a bit, bit tough. But I've read it, the story behind it is I actually brought it in Bath because that's when Catherine Morland buys her copy. I remember the clerk who sold it to me was like, have you read this book? And I was like, no. And he said to me, it's a tough read, and I totally agree with that. Um, so yeah tiny like tiny teeny fawn and really old english language kind of thing so it's a bit a bit rough run a bit rough around the edges but give it a go if you love novels and gothic romances at that last book i've read which i just finished literally hot off the press is vivian goldman's revenge of the she punks this is a book i devoured this in two days right it's, it's, it's amazing it i could talk all day about this book i bought it in Margate and i i I can't remember how it, it came with my knowledge. I had to order it. I think it was in my professional kind of like circles. I think I think I saw it advertised somewhere or like someone, a hero that I follow, like someone in a band must have been quoted in it or something. I think it was polystyrene. I think something around polystyrene and I found out that it's book and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll buy it and I'll, I'll read it in my own spare time. And it's been sitting there for a few months since Halloween I bought it. And I wish I, once again, like all the other books, I wish I picked it up earlier. It's basically a history of punk through women's eyes. And the like women that are in um, in different parts of punk around the world and how it's influenced them from back in the 70s to modern day. They basically tell their stories through Vivian Goldman. It's done in different sections like identity, money, protest, that kind of thing, and bands that relate. And what I love is each section has its own playlist. So identity has obviously got like um, x-ray specs in there and what i did was every time it came up with a playlist i went on spotify and i i like downloaded the songs listened to them and it made sense and it goes through the set list like methodically interviewing those kind of bands talking about those bands and i love it because from reading like mysteries of Aldolfo, which was written 300 years ago to a book that's literally published last year talk about harvey weinstein and trump and stuff like that it, it was it was refreshing to read something that's in modern English and I can relate a lot to and there's a lot of relation in this book when talking to the different bands Vivian Goldman has like really captured the essence of what it's like to be a woman in in punk not not maybe in punk even just in music and the obstacles that come your way really I didn't think I'd connect to this book as much as I did but I was in a band and uh, I think any woman in music or even the arts gets a bit of rebuttal from men from the industry from society and I, yeah i really connected with some of the quotes the women in here were saying because they, they certainly say the resistance they got the whole time and i was reading it and i, I remember like nodding along being like i've been there i've been there where guys don't think you're good enough or they judge you more than they judge their peers or like other men because you've got to do better and every time i found a quote that i found really inspirational i dogged it um which i never do to my books and i can't believe i did there's a band called fear from texas and the drummer's interviewed 
And she said, we have to acknowledge that as women in music in general, we are treated as lesser than. We assume that men know more about the instruments or play it better. We're also supposed to have a look like women in music are a gimmick. This is not the case. And the more we bring it to light in song and person, the more others will realise that women are not a gimmick. Maybe we can teach you something. When you, I don't know, maybe been in that industry for a hot minute um, and experiencing the same things, I really connected with this and really loved reading quotes like that because it felt like you aren't alone really. So I feel like if you're, if you're into punk, this, this goes for everyone. If you're a punk, if you're a woman, uh, if you've tried to hit it in the music industry, this book is for you. It's refreshing, like I say, it was, it was honestly gripping. I just read through it, read through it because it was just, I just connected on it. So such a great level. Like I'm a massive polystyrene S-Ray Specs fan, straight into it, talked about polystyrene and her issues. And from this band, book also, I've found bands that I love now. I didn't really know who like Pauline Black was before I read this book. Now like I absolutely adore her, I think she's a legend. And that's what I love. I love books that like challenge you. I love books that you can like learn something from. And if it's music, great. So I definitely, honest to God, recommend this. I recommend all the books, but Vivian Goldman has written an absolute stellar book here. Like it's it's empowering as well. That's the other thing. It doesn't though it, it can be quite depressing at points because you're like, God, like it's a bit like for a movement that's meant to be so open-minded sometimes it really wasn't and the last 40 years I don't think it's changed that much but there are women in this that are trying to pave the way that are trying to make a change like Patti Smith and stuff like that and reading anecdotes about them makes you feel a bit more encouraged like we're doing something and there's people all around the world in this book like women that are really really giving it a go really really trying to make a change and that's just really nice to read really so these are the four books I hope this has been informative. I am no way a book critic. I don't have an education in English language or literature. I've got an A-level, that's about it. But I don't have a degree or a master's in it. So I can't give you like analysis of the books, what each book means and the hidden connotations behind them. I can just tell you from an avid reader what I thought about these books. I'd say out of all of them, the two to read are these two. Easily. The Jane Austen fan or just like a, a biography reader good biography i love a good biography this is the best one i've read oh, in a long long time love that one if you're gonna have jane austen binge read that's one to go to if you're more into punk or music um and you want to this this like i said this one's not dry either this is a really good book to open your mind and if you feel a bit down about the music industry or you don't really feel connected or you even want some decent new bands to listen to definitely check this one out because those Spotify playlists now, I'm just like on repeat, they're insane. So yeah, that's my book review. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've tried to keep it short and sweet. I don't know if I have, but I don't want to like make it too ugh, boggy down with too much, you know, and I don't want to ruin the stories for you either. I hope this has been informative and I hope it helps you like pick a book to read. You know, in this, in this lockdown era that we're going through, you know, if you've picked one of these, you've bought them, and it's sitting there on the shelf or it's been sitting in your cart on Amazon, just pick it up, pick it up, give it a read. None of these you'll be disappointed, honest to God. Not, apart from this one, which is a hefty beast. It is, you know, she, she's not messing now, Radcliffe. She ain't messing. <laughs> so if you want her to go in hardcore, that's that book. That's the other one that I'd be a bit... Pick one of these instead, I reckon. Pick one of these. I hope you punks are okay. If you want to follow me on anything else, I'd suggest Instagram. But our Facebook's the same. It's just at Skaned. And let me know. If you've read any of these books, leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought of them. Did you like them? Did you hate them? Did you get on with them? Did you get on with them? <laughs> and yeah, if you like any of these bands, tell me which ones. Or if you've read this book, uh, which one, what, how this book got you into that band, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one, punks.